In today's jam-packed news video, we're going to be talking about challenges coming to the MCC, Halo Reach Forge coming to PC, weapon model viewing changes coming with that, and our new looks at Halo 3 and ODST on PC and when those flights could be coming around for us. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, please make sure to tap that like button so let me know you want to see some more content like this and it helps the video get more notoriety so more people stay in the know with everything about Halo. So let's get right into the content here. Now that April has come and passed for us Halo gamers, at the end of every month we get a big boy update from Postums generally about everything going on with the MCC and what the current status is of flights or builds of the MCC or new things to bring in and we have a lot to discuss in this video guys so one of the things i'm really looking forward to with an update coming to the mcc bringing in halo 2 and halo 2 anniversary to pc not only are just a whole new gaming experience which i'm super excited about but the challenge system will be coming in as well we did get a chance to play around this a little bit in a way when it came to the flighting process though there was no ui built out for it so basically if you played through the campaign or did some things and you received some challenges like you know completed but we weren't able to keep track of those or see what those challenges were we just kind of ended up unlocking them when we did things but when the game finally releases on pc we will get a nice it's a beautiful UI for us to review, guys. So to ease any confusions on what might this uh, challenge system might work out, I'm just going to read what they say here on the post. The challenges feature is designed to meet one specific goal, granting players XP for completing campaign missions. Each week, the first campaign mission a player completes on each difficulty in each game in the MCC will grant XP. Difficulty stack, so completing a mission on normal will also complete a game's easy challenge and so on. Upon completing these challenges, a notification will appear and the player will receive XP payouts tuned to the difficulty they played on. Each Wednesday at 10 a.m., which I'm assuming is Pacific Standard Time, in conjunction with the weekly matchmaking update, players' challenges will be refreshed. These challenges can be completed in campaign or campaign playlists. Like when I was playing through the flights, I beat Cairo Station on Legendary, and then I was able to get the challenges completed for also beating on the lower difficulties as well, which this is great, saves, us, saves you a lot of time, which also might give you guys a little tips and trick videos when it finally comes out. Though they do specifically mention campaign in this for the challenges which you know i'm really glad that they gave us more reason to play the campaigns because they are a ton of fun uh i just i don't really play a whole lot because i'm grinding out the xp trying to get those unlocks you know though i do remember seeing in the first picture shown of the challenge system that they had pvp challenges as well they don't mention anything about that in this update though hopefully they do implement some pvp challenges coming in later on which I believe we will be receiving other challenge types of challenges coming into the MCC in a later update uh, going on in this post saying in the future MCC update the full challenges feature will be released. This will include a much broader suite of challenges which reward players with XP, season points, uh, unique unlocks for engaging with the game modes and content across the MCC in different ways. Players will also be able to pin a challenge to the main menu to easier track their challenges, which is absolutely fantastic right there. Challenges will refresh on a varying timetable, some weekly, some seasonal, and some for some special events. And here's a little mock-up of what they were showing, what they were talking about being able to pin a challenge. So you can see on the screenshot here that at the main menu, you have your challenge pinned up there in the upper right-hand corner of a challenge that you're currently going for. You want to keep up to date what the progress is on it. That the progress bar will go up in 10% increments as well. So to keep that in mind when it comes to completing your challenges. Again, I'm just really excited about this because uh, it gives me a way to earn XP for more than just playing multiplayer because MCC really is the best way to play the campaigns. And if it's great content that's underutilized right now at the moment, be able to gain more XP is fantastic. And I'm looking forward to the future unlocks and special leads that will come when the game, when the aforementioned potential update that will come will give us some more challenges to work on. Now, when it comes to MCC, a lot of people have been asking, where is my Forge for Reach? Well, they do mention a little bit of an update when it comes to this, and which 
does seem very interesting. There might be three different tiers of forgers to look out for when it comes to this, because they mentioned about the file share system and how, of course, that's very important for your forge uh, feature to stay alive is to have people be able to share and play those contents very, very easily, in which that was what the file share is for. The cool thing about this is that it's looking like file share will be cross platform between the console and the PC, and so then you'll be able to share your different maps and modes made through that way, which is fantastic. Uh, whatever connects the community better, I'm all for it. Uh, it does sound like they're looking to create some kind of uh, filtering system for what kind of users are creating what kind of content. Uh, maybe possibly a verified check, maybe, as it sounds like, because it looks like they're looking to make it clearer for people when they're going to download things that these are uh, user-generated versus uh, built-in, pre-made stuff from like 343 or something like that, and also trusted uh, forgers as well. Trusted content could possibly just like it's whatever's featured on the main page at the moment, or maybe it's just like you are a well-known forger within the community, you get a verified check or something like that. Uh, but that'd be a great way to look over this because there is a lot of content that gets made in Forge that gets shared out that's maybe not something worth downloading, I would say. Uh, but uh, again, some considered trusted content for Forge is very important to be able to filter out and find the good stuff as soon as possible. In the update they also mentioned about key bindings, giving you the ability to double bind your keys. And so essentially have one set of keys that do one thing and then another set of keys that can do similar things, but it's different. Uh, the screenshot basically shows you that they have two different sets of key bindings you can do. Again, it's a typical PC feature that uh, I'm really glad to see that's coming to the MCC. Now a feature that was mentioned in a previous update about like a month or two ago, right when reach came out they were talking about how um, especially when playing in centered v crosshairs that your weapon model actually takes up a lot of uh, screen real estate especially if you're playing on like ultra wide settings or things like that uh, the people were kind of wondering if we can have the ability to possibly change the view model of our weapon so then they wouldn't cover up so much of our screen well it looks like that's actually coming in with the halo 2 anniversary as well as we're looking at the screenshot you can see the different amount of percentages you can move back and and down when it comes to your view models and that's really nice that they actually broke it up between uh, like melee pistol rifles heavies and more with the underneath the gameplay tab uh, especially with the heavy weapons those take up a lot of real estate and it'd be really nice to be able to kind of angle these properly and i'm glad that we didn't get like a crazy amount of customization with this as uh obviously you don't want just you know having the weapon on the screen part of the visual experience when playing halo and i would expect like some really actually sweaty tryhards to just remove it off your screen complete which you cannot do in game though it does mention here in this update saying that if you want further customization you can go in the configuration file and kind of work around with that however you please so for example what we're talking about here there's a screenshot here of halo reach you can see it looks like an ultra wide setting and you can see how much that weapon is really blocking your screen it's a really it takes up a lot of screen real estate right there and if you look at the second image you can see it's actually i would say properly placed as where the weapon should be it's a lot less bulky you can see more of the environment it's just much more functional and actually visually better in my opinion as well really glad to see this feature coming in with uh, halo 2 as well coming to pc and like we mentioned at the top of this video guys we are going to get a chance to see a little bit of what halo 3 and and what odst look like on pc so here are some screenshots being shared for you guys as you can see yeah this does look pretty freaking awesome, especially that FOV looks so much nicer than the original version of it, which I believe was like down in the 70s when it comes to FOV, really tight window. I remember hearing a lot of people saying to get nauseous when playing Halo 3 because of how small the FOV, narrow the FOV is. Being able to play these classic games with a higher fidelity is going to be absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait to play these again. And to end off this blog post, guys, Postums does say if everything goes according to plan, it shouldn't be too long until we have Halo 2 officially released on PC and then we'll get ready for Halo 3 flighting. Throughout the blog update they do say weeks and so I would assume that we're gonna get at least two weeks until we get a release. Um, normally it's on Tuesdays as uh, CE and Reach were both released on Tuesdays and so I'm assuming either May 12th 
May 19th or May 26th, we will see a release of Halo 2 on PC. So keep an eye out for that, guys. So that's everything I wanted to talk about of all the new content coming to the MCC. I will make another video kind of recapping everything that happened in the Halo 2 flighting process, what 343 learned, what they're going to be doing moving forward. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys, to check out that video coming out soon as well. If you like this kind of video, make sure you tap that like button. Let's know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts were on this update. Did you get a chance to play the flight as well? Let me know what your experience was. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel or missing any content for me, check out the videos on the screen over here. I got a link to my playlist, which keeps you updated with all the MCC and Halo news going on if you've been on loop for the last few days or so. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.